your exam is on Thursday next week so I hope uh, you will study hard Wait, next week, next week. Uh, Thursday next week yeah. you want me to I Wednesday First day of uh, one to five. So, anyways, the videos are uploaded. So you, d you don't, you can't blame me, no. Uh, you can't blame me if you fail the exam because I gave all the the resources. Okay? Uh, I'm sure you can pass the exam even without coming to class if you just do your part. So, the end of the bargain. So. Uh, no blaming, guys. Okay, don't fail me in the evaluation. Just kidding. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't care whether you fail me or not. But I'm doing my best to teach you what uh, we have, now, what I know, somehow. and what I am currently learning. Okay, so uh, we are in the topic of memory virtualization, and uh, we were talking about the memory API. And uh, the memory API is similar to the process API, wherein uh, a set of functions are presented uh, on, in the case of uh, the process API, you have the four uh, weight exec uh, combination. And for the memory API, as pro it, is, it is basically, again, is in the, uh, these APIs are presented for the programmers, okay? So the operating system provides uh, APIs for the programmers to be able to use the services of the operating system. In the way the process API is presented, uh, basically it allows the programmer, let's say you want to write a shell, okay? So you can make use of the fork execute combination of process API. Now in the case of the memory API, so the operating system provides mechanism for programmers to be able to allocate uh, memory for the for their program to use is the essence of that. So we have the malloc, which is actually used uh, uh, to allocate memory in the heap. So by default, when you program, if you know immediately the data that you're going to use in your program, you can declare them or define them as variables. You can in C programming you have global variables, and global variables are placed in the data section of the process, whereas local variables are usually is, is, uh, stored on the stack. Okay? The compiler, it's actually the compiler that allocates enough stack space for the local variables. Okay? Now, in the case of uh, dynamic memory, meaning these are the amount of memory that you will need at one time, okay? so you can use the API like malloc. Okay. So we discussed this last time how it operates, and uh, in the call to malloc, you need to specify a size parameter, the amount of memory in bytes that you would like to allocate on the heap. And the data type uh, for size is size underscore t, which actually I think is a hash defined to make uh, your programs more portable. Okay. Now, instead of directly specifying the amount uh, in bytes, you use the size of operator. Okay? So the size of operator, it's, uh, it's called an operator because it is, uh, it's not actually a function. So it returns the number of bytes that is passed as a parameter in this operator. For example, in. So in you say size of in for example it can be four bytes or it can be uh, eight bytes depending on the architecture okay? so you can have an architecture with a word size of uh, uh, 64 bits or 32 bits so the value will depend so that's why uh, I think in COPSA 21 it was emphasized that you should always use size of in your programs when you're using malloc to be able to make your programs uh, portable across different machine architectures, okay? And you also have to be careful when using size of because as shown in this for example, when you use size of X, since 
x to con the the size being referent uh, being pointed to by x is actually defined at runtime, uh, it will return four, right? This is a pointer. But if this is a an array type which is can be known at compile time, the correct size will be returned for this. So you have to be careful, okay? So uh, the free, I think we stopped here, free. So when you allocate memory, you need to free the uh, uh, the memory that you allocate. So I think this is uh, widely used when you are implementing linked list and you're going, you were implementing the delete node, okay? Because as you traverse, uh, first you find the node to delete and then you adjust the pointers in the linked list and then you free the temp that points to the node to be deleted, right? right? So that's the idea of uh, using free, right? So what does this uh, uh, drawing look like? Okay, so I think this is a visual, uh, visual illustration of uh, the difference uh, between, uh, actually an illustration how a pointer uh, is uh, implemented. This is an example here, right? So, so this is the illustration, right? So you have here the, again, the address space is the, when you say address space is the memory area that a process can access, right? It's address space. So you can think of this as parang itong area na to, halimbawa, tapos yung mga upuan na yan, yun yung bytes, right? So you can access each chair as a byte. So kayo yung ilalagay, nakalagay dun sa ano, sa ay yung data na nakalagay dun sa memory slot okay so yung kabilang room ibang address space yun okay you, you, you can think something like that okay now if you have in, in your C program if you have a, a variable here uh, pi pi is probably a pointer to an integer okay int star pi so this is a local uh, variable okay so the local variable uh, is stored in the stack Okay. So this is the memory. So notice that uh, uh, this book usually represents memory area from uh, the lowest memory area and the highest memory area. In some references, it's best to put the lowest memory area at the bottom and then uh, uh, the highest memory area at the top. But in, in this textbook, it is used like this. So the heap, uh, the, stack, uh, the stack grows downward. It grows downward in terms of the memory address and the heap grows upward. Okay? So the PI variable is actually here in the stack. Okay? And then when you use malloc, okay, when you use malloc, so size of int. So what it shows here, it, you allocated uh, four ints. Do you agree? So you allocated four ints. Okay? And luckily, the size of an int is... Uh, four uh, four bytes. Okay? So initially, this is the configuration of the heap and the stack. So currently, PI is in the stack, so it's occupying this space. Okay? And then, when you call this, the operating system via a system called, called break, okay? it will allocate four slots. One, two, three, four. Okay? And this will be the area that will be pointed to by the pointer pi. You get the concept, guys? Okay. So, this is essentially what happens. Kung hindi nyo to na-visualize sa COMSI 21 and 1, 2, 3, after 1, 2, 5, you should be able to explain. Ano ba yung itsura ng pointer pagdating sa memory? Okay. But remember na yung read nyo to ay parang word size. Okay. Yung word size niya, is the smallest amount of uh, addressable memory, basically. So, kung 32-bit yung word size niya, you can access the memory uh, in a 32-bit uh, blocks, right? So, spy here is the local variable in the stack, and then it points to the start here, okay? So, very simple. And memory freeing, okay? So, you allocated the memory. The next step is to free the pointer to an integer. So what will happen? So this is the configuration, okay? And when you free, okay? So the heap simply, uh, the marker actually, uh, the, this is just a marker, 
Okay? So when you free this, uh, the marker to the start of the heap is moved back by the amount of memory allocated to pointer pi. Get the idea? Okay, so that's what happens. And this is now the new configuration after the uh, four integers have been uh, freed from the heap. Okay? Okay. Now, there are certain, certain issues that, uh, that might happen. Okay? Uh, actually, in the book, it's, the, it's called uh, the some problems. Most programmer, uh, the idea here is uh, specifically NC, the allocation of memory is uh, the responsibility of the, the allocation and the freeing of memory is the responsibility of the programmer. Right? Unlike in modern programming languages with uh, garbage collection like Java. When you create new, when you use the new and then the object, you create a new object, you don't care to, you don't need to free that object. It's the garbage collector that will free those unreferenced objects, right? right? But in C or in C++, you have to be, uh, the programmer is the one doing the allocation and freeing. And that actually leads to certain problems. And as a programmer, using the memory API, because eventually, uh, if you go to systems programming, embedded systems, right, you will need to allocate memory. What are some of the common mistakes made by programmers? So the first one here is uh, forgetting to allocate memory. Right? So what can you say, what can you see in this code? So you have, uh, this is a valid uh, syntax, right? So basically, you're allocate, uh, you're creating a string, and then the compiler will h e l l o, and of course there is a null character at the end, right? Okay. and then you have the destination. So this is a common problem in Compsci 11. Okay. and then you're trying to copy the source to the destination. Okay. However, you did not allocate the destination. There is no malloc. This one is allocated by the compiler. Okay? Because nung pinars ng compiler to, nakita niya source, tapos string literal, siya na yung nag-allocate nun automatic. Okay? So, how, how this code fragment, how does it look in the main memory? Okay? So, you have two variables, source and destination. So, you have source, destination, and then source is allocated to hello. So, it's pointing here. Right? Do you agree? Okay? And then, dest it's not pointing to anywhere. So that is actually a problem. Now, string copy, uh, since you did not, you, you, you actually get a seg fault for that because this destination might be pointing somewhere. Okay? Kasi sa stack, kung ano man yung value dito, uh, kung ano man yung nakalagay dyan, uh, yun na yung gagamitin niya. Kung may previous contents yan, dun siya magpo-point. Itatry niyang, ano, itatry niyang isulat yun. Halimbawa, uh, dito, merong uh, string dito, itong first row string, kokopyahin niya doon sa kabila okay? hindi pwede yun or hindi niya alam kung saan kokopyahin okay? that's the idea so the correct code of course is to maybe in job interviews this might be asked uh, to you okay? so you are given this code what is wrong with this code? you should be able to explain uh, sir, hindi, uh, hindi siya naka-allocate ng memory and how should you correct that? so this is the correct way to do that Okay. So you have uh, uh, to allocate the memory. How much uh, space are you going to allocate? So first, you need to specify the length. So the str length function will be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 plus 1 for the null character. That will be... So ano yung syntax error dito? Anong kulang? Wala gawin na ng kulang. May kulang dito. Equals. Okay. So, car star DST equals car star. Okay. So, may equal dapat yan. Syntax error ko. Okay. So, this is now how it will look like in the main memory when uh, the correct code is given. Okay. So, the next problem is not allocating enough memory. 
uh, this is actually prob uh, yeah, problematic because this can lead to security vulnerabilities. A lot of hacks or attacks actually is because of this improper or not allocating enough memory na overwrite ng input yung certain sensitive areas ng process. Kaya nati take control nila yun. Okay. So, this example. So, you have... Uh, uh, ano pinagkaiba nito doon sa kabila? Wala lang siyang plus one. Okay. So, what will happen is... Okay, six bytes. Okay. Hello. Ito null character to. Okay. So, 5 bytes lang yung, ano niya, 5 bytes lang yung uh, inallocate niya, then that will be a problem. Okay? So, merong area dito na masasapawan niya. Okay? And uh, in security, uh, may mga programs na ganyan na hindi chine-check kung ano yung nilalagay niyang, ano, nilalagay niyang data sa buffer, sa array. And that basically leads to buffer overflow pwede mo pwede makakuha ng remote shell. Okay. So one nine one tinuturo yan kung paano ginagawa yan. Okay. So the correct way to do of course is you have to allocate the enough space. Okay. So you have to be careful with that. Okay? The next one is uh, forgetting to initialize. Okay? So when you forget to initialize the contents, okay? Uh, or the allocated memory, okay? kung ano yung nag exist before noon, yun yung gagamitin niya. Okay? So normally, the, the correct way to do that is to zero out, uh, to zero out the contents. Okay? Gawin yung zero lahat. Okay? So halimbawa, dito, ginamit niya na to, pointer na to. Okay? Every time na nag siya, iba yung lalabas dyan, kung ano man yung current content ng memory. Okay? Nakakita niya yan. Nagkukumpis ko. Bakit ganito yung lumabas, sir? In-output ko yung address nitong, uh, in-output ko yung value nitong point. Ito yung uh, next. No, dapat. Bakit iba yung address niya? Iba yung lumabas? Because you failed to initialize the, uh, uh, the variable, the pointer, the contents. Okay? Dito. Okay? And then, memory leak. Okay? A program runs out of memory and eventually dies. You don't experience this uh, that much kasi yung mga, pro yung mga processes na nagra-run nyo ay short-lived. Meaning, wala pa, kung baga hindi siya 24-7 nagra-run. Imagine kung gagawa ka ng web server like uh, Nginx or Apache na nagra-run continuously. Okay? Pag may nag-request na, ng web page, mag allocate siya ng memory para i-handle yung request ng web page na yon. Ngayon, pag hindi, pag hindi mo properly na-manage yung memory, mag run out of memory ka and then you get uh, memory leaks. And magka-crash yung server, server mo via what you call parang tinatawag na denial of service attacks. Okay? So, pag makapag-feed ka ng madami, hindi kaya i-handle yung server mo, you get a denial of server attack. So, this is actually important if you're writing server software. Okay? So, how does it work? So, you have the address space, uh, the pointer A here, okay? stuck here, and then the allocated. And then, you continuously allocate without freeing uh, stuff. And then, eventually, nagkabanggaan na dito, sa illustration na to, nagkabanggaan na yung stack saka heap. Okay? Nagpang-abot na sila. So you only have a very limited memory. Tapos nag-request ka na naman, wala nang pwedeng i-allocate sa'yo and denial of service na. Kasi halimbawa, bawat isang block dito represents one uh, client sa web server nyo. Uh, in, after nag-disconnect, hindi mo free ni yung, ano, yung connection na yun. Okay? So, ubos ngayon yung resources mo. Okay? So you have to be very careful with that. So, uh, hindi siya makita sa mga ginagawa yung simple program lang. Pero pag nagbusa kayo ng open source code, tinignan yung source code ng Apache, ng NGINX, makakita nyo yan na kailangan, meron silang, meron silang module for memory management, for allocating yung mga data structures uh, na ginagamit nila. Okay. Remember na itong mga to, structures usually to, no? itong mga ina-allocate mo ng malok, malok tapos yung size of yung structure. Okay. 
hindi siya yung ordinary bytes lang. Structure siya that represents the abstractions in the programs that you're using. Okay. Other one is dangling pointer. Uh, have you encountered this in linked list? Okay. So yung dangling. So freeing memory before it is finished using. So uh, what happens here is hindi mo pa tapos, free ni mo na. Okay? So, wala na ngayon. Parang, lost ka na. Ah, dati nagpo-point ako dito. Tapos, free ni ko siya. Bigla mong free ni. So, sa deletion din to. Ano na mga yan? So, dang, dang yung pointer. Okay, so, uh, you have this illustration. Uh, star A is the pointing to the head of the list. So, node, first node, second node, third. And star B is pointing to the second node in the link list. So, uh, star A, uh, star B, okay? And then, so, gagawin mo ngayon is, uh, i-delete mo yung ano. So, parang deletion to, hahanapin mo na yung i-delete mo. So, siya yung temp, di ba? Sa link list, temp, traverse mo. And then, oh, ito na, i-delete ko. So, ang nangyari, free ni mo to. Sabi ni Sir Arian, bago mo i-free, i-save mo muna yung next nito para ito, mapupoint mo doon. You get the idea? So, this is a common problem also in, ano, uh, halimbawa, sa operating, gagawa ka ng sarili mong kernel. Di ba meron tayong ready queue? Okay? Yung ready queue, link, list yun. Halimbawa, itong process na to, nag-kill ka. Kill certain PID. So, hahanapin mo ngayon yung process ID. Nahanap mo to, tapos kinil mo na yung, ano, tinanggal mo na sa list yung, ano, yung process na yun. Tapos, yung scheduler, round robin. Yung ginagawa mo. So, yung round robin, tatraverse siya dyan. Ngayon, pag next niya dito, free name, wala na. So, ano nangyari? Okay, so, that's what happens when, when you have a dangling pointer. So, you have to be careful when you use this. Okay? So, other memory APIs include si alloc. Okay? So, ito yung ma mas magandang gamitin. Kasi yung malloc, kung ano yung nandun na contents, nandun pa rin yun. Pag si alloc, automatically, zini zero nyo na. Okay? So, this is a better uh, way to allocate memory. Okay? Uh, another uh, reason, another error is yung double free. Free ni mo na nga, uh, free ni mo na, tapos free ni mo pa uli. Okay? So, again, this is also, ano, uh, security vulnerability. Yung mga recent na exploits, uh, yung mga recent vulnerability sa Windows, uh, ang ini-exploit is yung double free. Okay? And uh, actually, hindi ko pa natin testing to, but siguro late, later, uh, pag-aaral ko paano ba na-exploit yung mga vulnerabilities if you are using double free. So, dalawang best mo ngayon, ano, free ni yung, ano, yung uh, uh, memory area. And usually, walang complain yung, ano, walang complain yung uh, system. Okay? Pero you can take advantage of that in the security perspective. So you can experiment with that. Okay? And realloc. Okay, so have you used realloc before? Yung realloc would mean, oh, hindi ka siya. Lakihan natin. Okay, so it's realloc. Okay? So basically, you change the size of the memory map. Okay? Okay, so itong mga to, yung malloc, sialloc, realloc and uh, free they are all part of the standard C library okay? hindi sila system call okay? and underneath that is the system call associated with them so yung BRK and SBRK so di ba sabi natin when we allocate memory on the heap merong marker yan na nagsisignify kung saan yung end ng heap okay? so pag nag-allocate ka yung marker na yan, mag-move lang. So, yun yung ginagawa ng uh, uh, BRK. Okay? So, malloc uses the BRK. You don't directly use the BRK. Uh, you can uh, read more about that. Uh, man BRK. Okay? So, it's part of the POSIX standards, Unix standard. Okay? So, change the location of the program break, which defines the end of the process data segment okay so basically part of the stack okay so yeah you can uh, uh, read more about this in the man page and 
course, they are related to process allocation and memory management. Okay? So, another uh, system called that is allocate, uh, useful is called uh, memory map. Okay? Uh, we'll discuss about this later. Okay? But it allows you to create uh, memory regions na pwedeng i-share ng dalawang processes. When we go to, when we talk of uh, shared memory, okay, so we can have something like memory map that can be shared by uh, two processes. Okay. Kasi di ba sabi natin, yung isang process, meron siyang sariling address space. Ito, address space ng process ng 125, sa kabila, address space ng process ng COMSI 21. Okay. What if, gusto mag-share ng uh, memory area yung uh, yung lobby halimbawa gusto i-share ng 125 saka ng 21 right pwede kang gumamit ng mmap na pwede kaming mag-write doon sa lobby mag-write tayo 125 sa lobby yung 21 pwede rin mag-write sa lobby you get the idea so that's memory map okay are there questions on this uh, chapter Okay, so straightforward naman yan. So, we move on to the next, uh, which is the address translation. Ito na yung low-level stuff, how the operating system virtualizes the memory. Okay. So, sabi natin, uh, a program uh, will see uh, uh, will see itself uh, para makita niya na yung memory siya yung may ari, may access siya. Okay? So, it's called the virtual address space, but eventually that virtual address will be translated to physical address. So, kung nagwa one three to kayo, di ba meron tayong instruction memory sa kahit memory? Yun ay physical address, okay? Pero programmer hindi yun na ikita, hindi yun na nakita ng programmer, okay? Yung instruction memory sa kahit memory. Ano ang kita nila yung virtual address space, which is a contiguous uh, amount of memory, uh, zero to four gigabyte. Right. So the goal is, of course, uh, efficiency and control. Right. So remember, yung strategy natin sa CPU virtualization. Parang uh, idea natin yung operating system kernel. Uh, parang pabayaan mo na lang yung mag, di ba? Pag napili na ng kernel na scheduler yung isang process, ilalagay siya sa CPU. Tapos bahala na siya kung ano gagawin niya sa CPU. Yun yung limited. Uh, direct execution and syempre kahit na sabihin natin na i-allow natin yung process na maggamit ng CPU pwede natin i-interrupt yun using the timer ba? we have the timer na from time to time kahit habang nag execute yung process sa yung gumagamit ng CPU bumabalik pa rin sa operating system yung control para let's say mag-perform ng uh, scheduling decisions etc. So, ganun din dito. So, in memory virtualizing, uh, uh, in memory virtualizing, uh, efficiency and control are attained by hardware support. So, in order to be able to uh, implement or to be able to achieve uh, efficiency and control, you need hardware support. Okay. Ano yung examples ng hardware support na kailangan? Those will be, uh, we wish we'll discuss this later, registers. Okay. Di ba, Meron tayong basic registers pag nagpo-program tayo, RAX, RBX, etc. etc. Ginagamit natin 'yon, okay? In addition to that, yung ginagamit ng programmer, kailangan din natin gumamit ng extra registers. We'll, we'll, uh, these actually are called base and limit registers, for that later. And then we can also have TLB. Okay? TLB is translation look uh, look aside buffers which actually acts like a form of a cache, okay? for memory references and of course when we go to uh, paging kailangan din yung hardware merong page table so remember this three hardware components na kailangan para ma virtualize yung memory uh, to be able to achieve efficiency and control registers plbs and uh, page tables right this is something yan later Okay, let's start with address translation. How does the hardware translate uh, the virtual address into a physical address? 
uh, to those who did not take 131 uh, from uh, sa akin um, new window let's try it natin new window and then Okay. So, anong pinapakita nitong uh, example na to? Okay. So, we are running the program a dot out the process so is in the memory now and this is the program counter. Okay? Notice that we have two processes. In memory, these are two processes. But they seem to be placed on the same memory area, right? So, that's the idea of virtual memory. These are two processes. They think that they own this memory address, but in reality, in the physical memory, the operating system actually uh, uh, they are located in different areas of the physical memory. So. To, to show you, to give you proof that there are actually two A dot out processes running, this is shown here. You have two different process IDs, right? Get the idea? So, there are two processes and each of these processes think that they are running in the, their own uh, sariling mundo na virtual address space. You get the idea? Okay. So, that is important. And, Kung ganyan yan, syempre, sa actual na memory, hindi naman sila pwede magkapatong, di ba? Hindi sila pwede magkapatong. So, kailangan merong translation na nangyayari dyan. And that translation is done by this one. Okay? So, there's a translation. So, yung nakikita natin sa GDB, those are called virtual address. Okay? So, there is a translation. And uh, the OS must get involved at key points to set up the hardware. Uh, kailangan ng hardware support para ma-implement yung virtualization na yun. Okay? And uh, during the execution or the creation of processes, the operating system will do certain stuff to be able to achieve the translation. Okay? So an example, let's, to, to, to further illustrate this, uh, so we have the C language uh, Example. So it's basically increments the variable x by 3. Okay? If you're going to this assembly, if you write a C code for this, it will be uh, move uh, x, kung ano man yung value niya, x plus 3, and then, so load, kung nagawa 3 to kayo, load, add, and store. Okay? Yung tatlong instruction na yun, magkakasunod. Okay? So 1, 3, 2. So assembly, so, yung maging isura niya, okay? And, kung uh, sa 1, 3, 2 lang, uh, yung arm leg D8 yung, ah, uh, leg D8 yung architecture, ito ay, uh, ano kaya yung syntax nito? Sabihin natin na AAX is registers X1, X0, X1, so it will be uh, LDUR uh, X0, comma, ano, square bracket x2 okay so yun yung ibig sabihin no? and then add will be add uh, lalagay mo sa ax it will be add x0 comma x0 comma walang ganito eh walang, walang immediate sa ano, walang immediate sa vh so kailangan ilipat mo muna sa isang register yung ano saka mag add but you get the idea okay so this will be the structure and <clears throat> Pagdating sa memory, ito kayo yung magiging 
Ah, ito, 132 na to, yung fetch decode execute. Okay? So you have fetch instruction at address 128. So ito yung program counter. If you look at this example here, so ito yung program counter. Dapat pala ito rin yung ko example, no? Ito na lang yung kinode ko. Siguro next meeting, pagkita natin. So fetch yung instruction na yan, and then uh, execute this instruction. So syempre merong instruction decode dyan, blah, 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 sa so 132. And then... Uh, since may map yung EBX, uh, so niload lang, niload na isa And then move to the next instruction, 128 plus 4. So this is the instruction. And then uh, execute the instruction, perform the add, and then go back. So ito yung itsura ng uh, memory niya. Okay? So these are the addresses, and these are virtual addresses. Pareho yan ng nandito. Okay? This is a 64 bit system, kaya mahaba yan. Okay. Actually, 48 bits lang yung ginagamit sa uh, x86-64. Okay. Hindi yung full na 64 bits for addresses. Okay. So, is what it does. And, kailangan i-convert ito into physical addresses. Okay. So, the OS wants to place the process somewhere else in physical memory, not at address 0. And the address space start at address 0. Okay. Uh, Dito, kung gusto natin i-dump yung ano, uh, let's say, let, let's dump 4 bytes, uh, four, 4 words from address 0. Pwede kaya, okay? So, cannot access memory at address 0. So, ibig sabihin, merong gumagamit ng memory, reserve yon let's say, for the operating system. So, there are, uh, syempre, yun nga, pag pinakita natin, info prop mapping, Okay. Ito lang yung mga areas ng memory na pwede mong ma-access as a form of protection. Okay? Yung mga address, starting address and the end, ending address. And this is 4096 for a page size. We'll, we'll discuss paging later. Okay? So, what happens is actually kung uh, yung idea ng relocation, okay? so, uh, ito yung virtual address space So, to be able to do that, dito na ngayon papasok yung first hardware uh, requirement. Yung tinatawag na base and limit or base and bounds register. Okay? So, what happens is to perform relocation, okay? ang idea kasi ng relocation is nag-A.GBA na ang pamamina, dito siya nilagay. Mas nag-A.Out na naman ako sa ibang terminal, dito naman sa ilalagay. Okay? So yung decision kung saan siya ilalagay will be done, will be made uh, by updating the contents of the uh, base and bounds register. So, to be able to relocate, kasi ito yung nakikita ng process, eh. ito yung nakikita ng programmer. Pag nilagay siya sa memory ng operating system, the base register, kailangan specify mo. Okay? Dito yan. So, ang value niya ay 32 KB. Nandito siya. And then, yung bounce register niya ay 16 KB. So, ito yung laman niya. You get the idea? Para, makapag, para magawa ng operating system, yung pag-relocate, pag-move around niya ng process dun sa main memory, okay? kailangan ng dalawang register. Yung base register sa yung bounce register. Yung base, kung saan siya nag-start, tapos yung bounce, kung saan siya nag-reel. So, yung process, ang pwede niya lang galawan, ito. Kung mga itong room na to, ito yun. Okay? Kung ako yung code, kayo yung data, okay? 
first idea. Now, right? So, uh, to be able to implement this mechanism, okay, it is actually during the boot up process, uh, re recall yung bootloader, no? real mode siya, tapos pag nag-switch siya sa protected mode, 386 protected mode, kailangan mag-set up, i-set up niya yung base and limit re registers actually. Okay. So normally ang ginagawa dyan, which you will see later sa code mismo, yung base register uh, always starts with uh, some uh, page aligned memory area. Okay. Makikita nyo naman yun later pag nag, nasa code na tayo ng, ng bootloader. Okay? So, you set the base register value and then the actual physical address is actually the virtual address uh, plus the base. Okay? And then every virtual address must not be greater than uh, bound and negative. So, ito yung to ensure protection, okay, kailangan yung virtual address na generate mo should not, uh, should be within the bound. So, nandito lang dapat sa area na to. So, kung nag-load ka, so remember, uh, dito nag-load ka ng EBX. So, ibig sabihin, yung EBX, okay, pag nag-perform ng translation, dapat within this memory area lang. Okay? So, uh, 32 plus 16, that will be 48. So, sakto yan na 16 kilobytes. Okay? So, yan. Uh, so, it's the hardware that does that. Usually, you have a memory. Uh, we have the component called memory management unit that does that, the translation. So, here's an example. Okay? So, ito yung virtual memory address niya. Is the virtual memory address 128 virtual address? Okay. Kailangan yung fetch tong instruction na to. Saan? Sa, sa instruction sa memory, sa instruction memory. Okay. So uh, first instruction at address 128. Paano gagawin yan? Okay. So 32 KB yun yung base address yun yung nandito sa base register. Okay. Plus 128. Okay. So ibig sabihin 32 896. So yun yung physical address niya. Okay? Nagawa nyo? Ito yung physical address niya. So, ang assumption natin, mas malaki yung ano, mas malaki yung physical memory kaysa dun sa address space. Okay? Uh, later, i-violate natin yan na kung saan yung virtual address space is kasing laki ng ano, ng physical memory. We're going to talk about virtual memory later. Pero ngayon, ito muna yung assumption natin. Maliit lang yung memory na kinakain ng process compared to the actual physical memory. Okay? So, uh, okay? When you execute the instruction, okay, uh, since naglo-load siya, okay, so ganun din, uh, 32KB, tapos 15KB, and this will be the address. So, nandito yung 3,000, no? So, yun yung ilo-load niya. Okay, so. Get the idea? So, we'll stop here and uh, continue next meeting. So, ah, hindi pala. Exam next meeting. Okay, so, uh, study hard. Re-watch the video. Gawin nyo, ilagay nyo na sa sleeping, another, sleeping time nyo yung, yung, <laughs> ano, yung, yung YouTube videos para ilang, 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 ilang oras ba yun? <laughs> Okay. Eight hours yata. Nine hours of listening. Okay. Gusto nyo. Pwede, pwede nyo naman is, pwede nyo naman i-speed up yung play, play ano na na eh. Diba? Yung speed. Yung, uh, yung, yung speed.